good news everyone! We're back with Dungeon Quest! Welcome back folks, so let's play Dungeon Quest. Let's defeat the dragon properly this time. <laughs> yes, it's a typical like early 90s fantasy game, it has to have a dragon. We've seen you before, sir, you're a bit dead. Wonder how you managed to get back here. Anyway, let's get the dragon. Hello! Wow, he's using a really big... Oh, it's obviously a knight's lance he's using there that's broken. <laughs> Come on, do 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 Without the shield we'd be dead, so we know what we're gonna do. What we're gonna do is something that's completely odd. We're gonna throw the sack. The moment you pull the bag out, you notice the dragon's eyes perk up with playful interest. You dangle it before him, mesmerizing him with a tiny treasure, marveling at his childlike fascination. Then in a quick inspiration, you nonchalantly toss the precious bag into the abyss. The dragon moans pathetically, and turns tail to quickly follow it, jumping unthinkingly into the abyss after it. Nice work, adventurer! The dragon's first receding groan tells you that deep in the darkness of the abyss, the dragon's either blissfully happy with its contents of the sack, or breathing his last on account of the fall, and either way, he's out of your hair. Personally, I think it's the former, because it is a dragon after all, and a dragon wouldn't be killed by something like a simple fall. So let's travel west. There are no more dragons, that's it, the dragon is dealt with. Ooh, you are standing in the entrance of a centre portion of an underground chamber. Surrounded by the black abyss, and previously guarded in the most effective manner imaginable by the dragon, your way is clear to the centre ring. A stone-tilled area lead to two vast copper metal doors. Wow, have you seen the glow beyond those doors? <laughs> Let's go in. And folks, if you thought this game was a true fantasy game, it still is a true fantasy game, except you see a bowling ball and a pin there. <laughs> Just inside the great bronze doors, you enter a most unusual place. You enter. You could hardly call much of anything in this place usual. Even so, this one takes the cake. It appears to be a place of some sort of hedonistic worship ritual. Perfectly round room of gigantic proportions. Directly in front of you, across the many yards of checkerboard paving stones, is a juggernaut rendered in bronze and fitted with huge green stones for eyes. Around the idol is a ring of glowing coals. Hanging around the idol's stone neck is a massive golden chain bearing a brilliant fiery ruby as large as your palm. Just at the edge of the ring of coals is a small, nearly charred book or manual of some kind. The whole room glows eerily from the light in the ceiling, which emanates greenish light. Except for the entrance you just came through, there are no doors to be seen from your vantage point in front of the idol. Oh, there are! Let's read the book. The books, the inside pages have all been torn out. Shreds of some of them still remain in the binding, but there's no vi text visible on anything inside. The back is black. The back is blank. It's black, actually. But before it got thrown into the coals or nearly so, it was probably purest virgin white. The cover bears a nearly obliterated title that reads Ibsifu Dipsifu At the smaller section underneath, much easier to read. Wisnjibu 1.0. 1.0? Okay, let's use the code wheel. The deaf turning of the toad wheel translates the title of the book's cover Dragon Construction Set version 1.0. Oh? Okay, I'm just gonna go with that. <laughs> By the way, there is an exit. You're gonna have to jump for it. Well, let's jump. Taking a long leap, you and pulling your clothing close around you, you broad jump the wide strip of growing coals. You're not on the other side. What? Acme Trophy Company? No job to l oh. Around the ring of coals, hugging close to the plinth of the idol, you carefully pick your way to the back of the idol. Here, behind the imposing juggernaut, stands a small, oddly metallic door bearing heavy reinforcing bars, not even a hint of a doorknob, handle, or even a lock. Oh. The back of the idol is behind you. Yeah. Oh, no, this is when the game gets weird. If you thought this was a fantasy game now, you're wrong. The door is heavy metal, either chromed or polished, to a shine almost worthy of mirror status. It appears to be a flat plate in the wall, however, as there is no knob, no handle, no lock, nothing. Besides the metal plate, is another smaller metal blocks protruding slightly from the surface of the stone wall. Hmm. The 
Let's look at the box, shall we? Hmm. Oh, God. This metal box is about six inches square. The cover is flat and protrudes slightly from the surface of the wall. The cover appears to be hinged to the left. Uh, it's a keypad. Well, I'm a fantasy adventurer. I know nothing about keypads. Have at you! Stepping slightly back from the wall, you you have at the box with the sword, managing only to get some nasty dings in the blade of the sword. Strangely, as you prod the sword with the sword, a mysterious green light seems to shine through a crack between it and the stone on the left side. Try as you might, though, you can't get the sword to do any further damage. Or help to the box. Hmm. East? Tiny crack in the wall. That's what we needed. And the game now goes completely mental. Look at this. This is something out of the ordinary indeed. Here is this ancient stone castle. It's an enormous room filled with odd contraptions and machinery that would look perfectly at home in a science fiction movie. It's going to be face printing. In the center of the room is an obelisk built of shiny metal that itself looks out of place here. The obelisk bears a massive array of blinking lights, and these lights don't look in the least like oil lamps and candles that illuminate the rest of the castle. The floor is stone white. Marble, perhaps. Aside from the blinking red and green rooms, the odd room is illuminated by a pulsing blue-white glow from the high ceiling. A skylight, re a skylight reaches up far up the center of the room, all the way from here deep underground to the rooftop of one of the castle's towers. In between are pulleys, wires, and collections of mechanical contraptions, all suspended from the timbers that brace the tower. A sign that obviously once adorned the metal door lies on the floor of the entrance. Can we read the sign? It's in a strange foreign script, but with difficulty you make it out. Mishkipizgiz! Oh, good old code wheel. What will we do without you? Laboratory! Yes, folks, it's a science fiction setting! Sort of. This guy, science fiction. Let's search. Careful not to disturb any of the humming, threatening equipment. You check through the room for any signs of anything normal. No use looking for the abnormal, as the room is full of it. In the far corner, cowering under a white table, bearing a crackling contraption of some kind, you find a person. Now that is unusual in this place. Look at this person. Looks like a person. Cowers like a person. Must be a person. No, it isn't! It's a nerd! Impersonating a person! Wow, that joke was awful, game! Don't kill me! Please don't kill me! Promise you won't kill me and I'll come out and talk to you! Says the nerd. Maybe we can work this out somehow! Okay. This shrimpy, respectable nerd carefully extricates himself from underneath the table, stands upright, pulling himself to his full five-foot height, and confronts you. You killed my dragon! He whines. I knew you did, because you're here, and you couldn't be here without killing my dragon! The execution stings you to the quick. Do you know how long it took me to build that dragon? First I got the programs mixed up, I turned my uncle into a minotaur, and then I... Well, it's no matter now. You killed my beautiful dragon! Oh, joy. Look. Look, he says. He's Hal's fine now. He's really okay. And it was all my mistake anyway, so just go and leave me to my experiments. This is Hal. This obelisk is Hal. I think I'm on the verge of making Hal multitask. Uh, no, actually, you're not. You see, what you're actually doing is destroying all life. Keeping a wary eye on the words, every nervous action, you carefully tell him all you found out about the miserableness of the village and the surrounding areas. No! cries the nerd incredulously. That's not the way it's supposed to be! It's supposed to be a garden of Eden all over again! Everything's supposed to be rosy and good, and, and, and... The nerd sits dejectedly on a metal stool. Wait, unless... unless I put in the coordinates... With a quick motion, he flits past you on the other side of the room where the console, filled with blinking lights, hums a low-pitched drone. You shout at him to stop, but he's oblivious to you as he whirls and punches on the many controls, hammering numbers frantically into a group of small boxes like the one that controlled the doors. Of course! How could I miss have missed this? The nerd slaps his forehead in frustration then returns to his numbers. It's the same number that's always got me! Two, how could I make such a mistake? Punching with finality on the desk, the nerd turns to you again sheepishly. 
what can I say? I, I'm sorry. I had the coordinates wrong, and it was all backwards of the way I programmed it. It's fixed now. So just in a few hours, everything should be on the way to recovery. Oh, what a silly fool I've been, thinking all those people that kept trying to get in here were trying to rob me of my scientific achievement. Oh, I know now. Well, I've reversed the polarity now. Uh, you can go if you like. Uh, here. He pulls his large jeweled ring from his finger and hands it tentatively towards you. Take this for all your trouble. I suppose even though I turned my uncle, he shudders, into a minotaur, uh, that he's still king. If he could, but if he could, he grant you a knighthood for your gallant quest. <laughs> the nerd nervous back, nervously back, turns nervously back to the console. Take the door behind Hal. It's a secret tunnel and stairway that goes straight to the garden. He closes the door behind you with a bang, nervously pointing your way to the exit. Okay, we're gonna go to the exit. Uh, folks, uh, pfft, that's the end of the game. It appears you have found out what was wrong with the land. What are you going to do about it? Guru! I'll tell you what I'm going to do about it. Reset the computer! And it'll all happen again! You give the computer the familiar three-finger salute. Congratulations! You vanquished all evil and won the game! Image Tech thanks you for playing Dungeon Quest. And that's it! Yes, the game completely curveballs you. In the end, it was all caused by a nerd who accidentally drained power f life from our land instead of somewhere else. Yep. But, uh, we won, and we never encountered the Minotaur, because encountering the Minotaur is a long, laborious process that will eventually have just got me killed anyway. And that's it! The end of Dungeon Quest. Dear Lord, it only took seven videos. Well, I hope you enjoyed it. I certainly did. And when we come back, folks, we'll be on to something else. <laughs> games of my childhood. The Amiga games were always short, but always sweet. And this one was rather fun. So, I hope you'll join me next time. I'll catch you later. Toodles.